we have Halo Fountain. Two and a white for an artifact with white and tap and untap a tapped creature you control. Create a 1-1 one, one green and white citizen creature token. Okay. Interesting. For white, white, and tap, and also untap two tapped creatures you control. Draw a card. Okay. Requires two creatures to be tapped, so they have to have attacked or been crewing something or some other means of getting tapped for like an activated ability. You can draw a card. Sounds decent enough. White, 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 white. <laughs> Jesus, so many white, white uh, pips in this thing. Tap, untap, 15 tapped creatures you control. You win the game. Jeez. Interesting. This is, this is interesting. I think this belongs in an aggro deck. And aggro decks that can use this, I don't know what you do. Like, do you just use it to draw cards? Like, I don't ever see you ever stop drawing cards like what's the point of just w trying to get to 15 maybe you don't i mean okay to be fair though they all sort of build towards the the 15 tapped creatures clause because you're playing an aggro deck which is probably gonna be based in um you're tapping your creature to flight to, to go in and get in the red zone so if you're going in the red zone you're going to be using your cards and not like virtual cards aka tokens um so like i guess kind of the first ability and second ability are doing the same thing to get to you that last clause. But I think using the second ability is probably still going to be the best ability. This is like in an EDH environment. Like it's going to be incredibly unassuming at first, right? Like you're just drawing cards with it. Like, oh, he's got a Halo Fountain, but he's just drawing cards with it or something like that. And then all of a sudden, you, just, you fire off the, the Death Star or something. <laughs> I can see that. That'd be that'd be decent. But at that at that point, if you have fifteen creatures, I, I bet you at ten creatures, people start to look at your board and look at you funny with the Halo Fountain just sitting there, because they know what it can do. <laughs> like you just win the game. You don't make a player lose. You just win the game. And it feels really bad to kill tokens. They're gonna be aiming for this artifact. It's an artifact, by the way. So most colors besides I think black still can handle artifacts. Um, blue can bounce, but that's that's kind of like a temporary deal with it. So most colors are probably going to be able to deal with this. So I think just keeping the, I guess, eye off you is, is the best thing to do. So you probably just want to keep drawing cards with this. Have them deal with your board or have them deal with your artifact is, I think, the best way to do it. Diversifying your threats. That's that's how you do it, baby. But 15, okay, 15 untapped creature. If you if you pair this with like Crypto Threat and EDH, I could see that. Because you play Crypt with right, you have two creatures on the battlefield, you tap two of the creatures for white, assuming you're playing green, right? You're playing Crypt with right and EDH. You can tap those two creatures, untap them, draw a card, now they're untapped. So they effectively it paid for itself. Halo Fountain paid for it itself. But then you can also use those creatures to because untapped, um, do something else with them. I think that's I think that's like a good strategy. Like, like, like a decent, neatly done strategy like this can go in like a ramp based edh deck or like an aggro based edh deck i think is pretty sweet i think it's interesting how they did add like the creature based clause with it because if they didn't add the creature based clause with it i think that'd be kind of op like you just tap one white for four mana to create one one token tap two like this becomes just like a, a weird swiss army knife white artifact for no reason like the creature i think the creature's being untapping the two creatures or one creature 15 creatures makes it makes his artifact white so i think that's interesting i think that's very very interesting a cool addition to do it right like having this be another like weird white win condition and aggro based decks where like most aggro based decks are probably white or such most white based decks are probably aggro this is probably going to be super fitting for most decks a lot of decks a lot of low powered by the way, I had to clarify that. Like getting to 15, 15 tapped creatures in like a CDH game might not be possible unless you're playing. Okay, I, I guess if you're playing Kiliad, maybe, like maybe. But there's always just like toxic delusions. All there's only like a very few of those, right? Unless you're playing like an incredibly um, black red based pod where they have like pyroclasms and things like that. I don't think it'd be interesting. It's definitely an interesting card for EDH. I don't think it will see play in modern. I think it'll also be played at least tried in standard, right? Like you just play this for three mana, and then on turn three. Um, although 
Do you want to play this in turn three for playing an aggro deck? I don't think you do. I don't think you do. Maybe you won't play in, EDI uh, in standard. I'm thinking you want to use your three mana for a creature, right? No? Like a stacks piece or something? And you get in for more damage that way. Like drawing cards won't, won't, won't let you win the game with aggro. So it seems kind of weird in that in that scenario. And I think it's way too slow if you're playing the control deck. How are you going to... You don't have creatures in the control deck, right? So like, I think it fits perfectly just in aggro decks at most, at most. Even then, it's... You probably want to play a creature over this and a standard aggro deck. I think it's interesting though. In, in EDH, this is definitely going to be an interesting card. And I am interested to try it or see people play it because I'm always up for like that white card draw. And this is... This fits down that, that road.